Are a number of Africans taking over now as district commissioners from Europeans? Yes, there are. Um, as far as I can remember, in fact, um, I had eight colleagues with me uh, who became district commissioners at the same time with me. And of course, there before, we, um, we had other African district commissioners. In fact, um, the disc commissioner from whom I took over was an African, and um, um, he really did introduce me to the district. Do you find that as an African you are accepted and respected by the Africans you deal with in the same way that a European district commissioner has been in the past? Uh, there is no doubt about that. Uh, I think people are coming to realize the fact that it isn't the individual that really matters. It is the principle he upholds, the principle that he tries to impart uh, into the people. Do you have any tribal problems as a Kikuyu when you have to deal with people from other tribes? Far from it. Um, I feel even happier um, when dealing with other people. I have worked in um, um, another province, uh, Nyanza province, which is predominantly the uh, Baluhia and the Luo, who, of course, had uh, apprehensions first when I got there, but I've got um, quite a number of friends there, and um, uh, I would be quite happy to work in the area because I know I was accepted as a leader by the people in that province. From a leader in the country to a leader in the city, Nick Mariuki, resale manager for Shell and BP which in Kenya is a combined company. Mariuki, he's 32, has been with the company eight years. He joined them as a trainee executive after taking an arts degree. The work has given him a wide experience of East Africa, as a depot under manager in Uganda, building up a chain of service stations in Tanganyika, then over to Kenya to open up new markets. At present, one in six of Shell BP's executives are African. Ten years from now, the company expects it to be three in four. This will do something to offset the pressure after independence for foreign companies to put more Africans in top jobs. But here again, the problem is lack of educated Africans. Reginald Bosenket discussed this with Mr. Mariuki. Are there many African executives like you in Kenya? Um, I would say there are many, although in the past few years, a number of the larger commercial firms have employed Africans in the executive grades in their organizations. I can mention a few. Uh, East African Tobacco, for instance, um, uh, another oil company, uh, the ESO Standard. Uh, it is definitely um, a pattern that is evolving in the country. When you began, though, in 1955, were you fairly exceptional? Well, to be quite honest, I think I was fairly exceptional. Uh, it so happened that, in fact, there were two of us who, uh, who had just graduated at Makerere, and we decided to join Comal. And it was so exceptional that it was a news item at that time. It appeared in the newspaper that two Makerere graduates have decided to join Comal. Do you think, Mr. Marioki, you might be tempted to leave your present job and join the government? Well, as far as I'm concerned, um, I think the temptation will be there, but it's a question of whether, whether um, the person concerned answers to the temptation. I have got an interesting job um, in my company, and it is no secret to say that I have already um, been approached by some people from the government. But as far as I can see, I'm, I'm, I'm quite satisfied uh, in my present job and in the prospect in the job that I think I shall resist as much as possible, you know, the temptation. Do you think that an independent government in Kenya will put pressure on firms like yours to increase the number of African executives? I think it is bound to come, really. Um, um, new countries are always keen to see the ratio disproportion corrected both in government and in commerce. But I think for some time to come, uh, the most immediate problem will be really to man the government services. Mr. Moriuki, you have one.